Ross, you've made a decision. Yes. Two two things on my docket for updates tonight. I made a decision. <laughs> the Lexus is staying after much deliberation. Um, kind of just gave in to not wanting to backtrack on vehicle age and mileage and whatnot. And also, frankly, I have so much time and emotional investment in this thing already. So it is, uh, it's going to hang around. Uh, we're going to do some other things to it. And yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's too good of a truck to let go. So, and frankly, I don't need anything <laughs> bigger. It in. is. Are those um, Light Force Genesis lights up front? They are. And there is also a worn winch on this truck that, uh, that Andy may or may not have something to do with. <laughs> I see that. I so, see that. Yeah, we got it, the same lights on our uh, one of our Pajeros. They're good lights. They are. I, I almost feel bad using them. Like, obviously never in the presence of another vehicle or anything, but I'm like, right. God, if there's a deer or something down the road, <laughs> they're not going to have a good time. No. Uh, yeah, they're killer. Um, so, yeah, so the Lexus stay. And the other update, yes, that is that yeah, is before yeah, I. Right. It's like having two sons on the front of a vehicle. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. The first time I turned them on, I sat there for a minute. I was just like, okay, lights have come a long way since I was running. Like, <laughs> I, I swapped them out for. Uh, I had Hella five hundreds on before, which are like, they're like the gold standard of cheap, you know, auxiliary rally lights, and they're fine. But this is just it's different. Yeah. Like it's the sun. It's the sun. Surface of the sun. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so that's the, the Lexus update. Uh, more to come as uh, things happen. We're trying to plan a couple local trips. And the only other news in my household is that the Hummer EV arrived today for my week of pretending that I'm saving the environment and uh, actually doing the exact opposite. Uh, we are, at least as of now, intending to take this up to Massachusetts on Saturday to run through some state forests and uh, and try to find trouble where the JAG SVR couldn't go last just it was like right around this time last year you, you mentioned this last time about how you're going to run up the same road as the yeah jack. i was like is that yeah. road wide enough because <laughs> the jacks look big on that little road i'll let you know 9200 9, pounds of environmentalism right there <laughs> yes yes um it is it's comical it, it, and it's weird like it, it's not and this is uh one for the record books but it doesn't look as big in person as it does in pictures uh, but hey, okay. it is it is so obscene it's and it's it's kind of awesome like it's kind of awesome in person but i'm like god it is just it's so irresponsible and it's so silly but see i i find it very interesting that that was your takeaway is it's not as large as it appears to be in photos in person because when i the the dealer near me has three on the lot mm -hmm. they look enormous and they move them to different spots to like try to minimize the size a little bit they look well, huge they look okay. so big i i think yes and it is not a small vehicle by any means but i think the normalizing of the 2500 3500 you know hood line that is basically at my face is <laughs> it, it takes the relativity out of things you know when the h1 and the yeah. h2 came out they were huge and now it's like, I mean, my dad's Silverado 2500 dwarfs this thing, yeah. you know, and it's, I, it's... I was a, I was an associate editor for a, uh, a publication in the hobby industry when the Hummer H2 first came out. And I worked with a guy who wrote uh, the wheels <laughs> column for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel in Wisconsin. And he got a nacho cheese yellow H2 oh, as boy. a few vehicle that week. And we all stood at the window of the building and we're like, look at the size of that thing. It's ridiculous. It's right? so huge. And now the Hummer EV is like, man, this thing is huge. It's like it's crazy. Yeah. We've uh we've, we have jumped shark on on vehicle size, which is part of the reason that the Lexus is staying because a Land Cruiser won't fit down some of my trails. So yeah, God, that thing is just there it is. The, I don't know if there is more of a moment in time vehicle than that. <laughs> Seriously, that was a uh, yeah. That's a, that's a good way to put it. That was a post nine eleven ostentatious like fuck you to everybody else in the world kind of thing. Yeah. Dude, my my favorite part of that quick Google image search is every single result had rims on it. I had to go. <laughs> I had to dig to find the one with the stock wheels. <laughs> <laughs> 
and my actually my dad had those uh those eight lug h2 wheels fit on the 2500s and 3500s and he had them on his 2008 silverado and they were mm-hmm. awesome it's like the right back spacing and everything so anyways that's all my updates uh chris speaking of uh big large gm produced vehicles suburban things oh it's like wait a minute where are you going with this like, <laughs> how's he gonna land this one yeah <laughs> well more- I, and and we're talking about normalizing of size. I don't think of the suburban as big. Like I, I'm a fifteen hundred suburban. That's not big. Like it's lengthy. It is, and it it really is. It is big. Like at a a large wholesale store over the weekend as I was leaving with my uh, strawberries and bananas and all the extra stuff that I have to buy the kids. Um, as I was backing out, a twenty five hundred uh, GMC Sierra was like pulling out as well, and I was like, he didn't look that big to me like it was just a normal size truck and i was like oh no that's actually the heavy duty version so um anyway i we've been teasing that i might have been starting to look for a different vehicle but instead of doing that i basically went out and drove the suburban a whole bunch um i took the kids out to a, a couple of different um spots nearby um the the glory of trying to off-road in kansas i love when the new people join because they're always like what are the good trails there are no trails there are literally no <laughs> trails they're just people's streets and then we have these things called minimum maintenance roads which sometimes are at the end of dirt roads that nobody takes care of um when i went out with the kids recently we did avoid all of the minimum maintenance roads because it was a little squishy and a little wet and so like traveling by yourself yes i had the mac tracks in the back but like didn't want to risk anything um mm-hmm. So we went chasing sunsets, basically, is what we I told the kids we were going to do. We left at like two in the afternoon. Sun goes down around five, five thirty. Right. We'll we'll try and get up. We'll find it. Literally, the clouds rolled in as we were approaching. And it just no, no, like I (laughs) used a ton of Photoshop to try to pull any color out of these images. I mean, Um, that's I was going to say that's a great image. Yeah, it's like a GM like press room image. Especially that one. (laughs) Shit. God, they got to hire you. But isn't, yeah. isn't that kind of like <laughs> yeah. the Murphy's Law of trips with a dedicated purpose? Yes. Like, I went on a couple of hikes where it was like, we're going to get up to the top of the mountain. We're going to be able to see the valley and forever. And you get up there and it's just fog. <laughs> yeah. You know? So that's well, we got stories like that. That's exactly. a pretty picture, though. <laughs> well, especially up there, you do. Oh, um, yeah. And so, like, I had the, the, the good news is the kids had a great time. That That spot really wasn't that far away. And it's a section of the Flint Hills that not not a lot of people know that the Flint Hills are in Kansas. They just think of Kansas like near I-70 and then just they're out of the state. Um, But kind of like Emporia down towards Wichita, there's a section of just like rolling hills, a lot of prairie Um, at the right time of the year. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, And the good news is it's only like an hour and a half out. So like the kids know we can get down there. And, and typically I like to get down there and then we'll go camp at like one of the state fishing lakes. But this was just like, we were short on time. Um, we didn't have a ton to do. So we were, I was like, let's go take sunset photos. And they were like, yeah, what else are we going to do? And so uh-huh. we, we, we had a great time. Uh, they had a good time, but what I ended up coming away with is how much more I enjoyed the suburban than I realized. Um, once I was in like, especially on rougher terrain like in the city streets you don't really see the benefit of the mag ride going on a gravel road all of a sudden you see, definitely see the benefits of a mag ride I always uh, forget so, that thing as mag that's yeah, yeah. and yeah. so just having a great time and and we let them get out and let them throw rocks and creeks and stuff and just they they had a blast and so i think i'm definitely going to keep the suburban i think i'll take a more of an economical budget and kind of I'm probably gonna put a rack on it. Um, there's not a lot of options. Um, but... Yeah, this is a, a call out to the aftermarket in general <laughs> to start start supporting this era suburban because the same thing is gonna happen in five years that happened to the 800s and the early 900s. Is they become yeah. increasingly affordable. If if I could find and... a slee off road like style slim bumper for the front of the suburban, I abs- yeah absolutely would do that. Yeah. Oh, it's 2017. Um, I was trying to find the Slee bumper that I love. 
Uh, yeah, you don't want to get like a ranch hand bumper or something. That no, like I don't. Two hundred pounds of the front. I, I <laughs> love the cooling. ARB like square look, but like there, there's nothing square about the Suburban. It's like it, all the edges are kind of rounded until you get to mm-hmm. the very back. So like, I feel like those don't really look as good. And of course, now the image that I was looking for disappeared. <laughs> I'm having a great Google search night. Uh, <laughs> there we I know. Go. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about, man. Uh, did so sleeves they used to make a kit for the hundreds that i think was just called like the yes kit or something and mm-hmm. it was like bumper suspension sliders skids oh, so good dude that sounds fantastic and i'd say yes to all of that so i'm i guess i'm giving sleeve free advertising that because it's even a <laughs> like a branded photo but just a, a, just a subtle come right under the nose of the grill on the suburban i don't i just don't want all this extra stuff and even the one I sent you the other day, Ross, had all those extra like fog light holes before below, mm-hmm. and the circle ones just look weird. And then the square light pods, I was just like, I it just it didn't seem right. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. If, yeah. it, anyway. if if approach angle and protection is a big thing, I'd wager that there's a fab shop in your area that could whip something up. I mean, my move is probably just to go find a Z seventy one bumper and move on. So that too. That too. Yeah. Those are a little harder to find. 17? Yeah, 17. 17.